Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about root cause and this is defined as the instigating factor to the development of a disease. So this is like the thing that happens that causes a chronic disease to develop. It's the, the thing that makes the disease happen. It's the event that causes the disease to start development. And this is really important because if you're managing symptoms, if you're taking medication, if you're doing supplements to help you with your symptoms, but you're not actually building a protocol around resolving this root cause problem, the illness is, is never going to go away. This is so important. This is, this is basically the foundation of a holistic understanding of healing. We have to look at the root cause of the problem, what actually went wrong in the first place, and correct that or support the body to correct that so then the disease can go away. And this, this really works, you know? I, I've done this myself, I, so I had five root causes, we'll get into that in, later in the video. I have done over a thousand consultations with, with other people helping them find their root causes as well. And this is why I wanna do this video today because I've got some really valuable information to share and some common misconceptions about root causes that I just wanna get out of the way because then, then they, they really throw people off in their, in their healing process thinking certain things are root causes and they're not, chasing the root cause forever and never actually figuring out what it is because it's actually three or four different things. There's a lot that goes into this. So I'm just gonna simplify this all down and give it to you, give it to you straight here. So by the end of this video, you're gonna understand what root cause is, how you can figure out what yours is and what you can actually do about it so that you can heal your chronic health problem because you can totally do it. I've done it, I've seen hundreds of other people do it and I believe in you, you can do it too. So. The, the root cause, these are the most common root causes and I am somewhat biased in what I'm saying here because I work with a certain group of people that have had similar health problems to me. So I see more of that, but I do, I do get a good taste of a lot of different things and these are the most common root causes. So it's more than likely that you've probably got one or more of these factors involved in the root cause of your illness. So it usually comes down into these two kind of categories. You've got toxicity and deficiency. And they, they kind of go hand in hand because the toxicity creates a deficiency and the deficiency creates a toxicity. So if you've got one on one side of this, you probably have one on the other side of the list as well. So these are the most common sources of toxicity that people are exposed to that cause a chronic health problem. Mold and, my, mold and mycotoxins, metals, so this can be things that I've got down here, amalgams, so this can be having like fillings in your mouth. This can be exposures to different types of metals in the food that you're eating or maybe you've got a, a joint replacement or you've had bolts or screws or something like that these can be leaching metals into your body uh, we've got antibiotics so this is a type of toxic exposure and you can see interestingly this antibiotic usually leads to a deficiency of of healthy bacteria which i haven't written over here so let me just write that so taking antibiotics which is most antibiotics are actually mycotoxins. You think about the, how penicillin was discovered, you know, the mold growing on the orange. So antibiotics are actually toxic. They're actually mycotoxins, most of them, and they can cause a deficiency because they kill the microflora. Then we're missing our probiotics. We can't create vitamins and synthesize different kinds of chemicals that we need to be healthy. So you can see the, the antibiotic causes a deficiency over here. Um, another common cause of toxicity is chemicals. So this can be chemicals in food, so this can be chemicals like plastics in, in, in the food that the, that the food is contained in. This can be um, if, you're, if you're working, say you work as a, you work in a hair salon or you work in a chemical factory or you work somewhere where lots of chemicals are being sprayed into the air or you get chemicals on your skin, things like that, you're going to be exposed to a lot of chemicals. So I worked with somebody that was a chemical engineer and that was one of his root causes because he was exposed to loads of the different plastics and things that he was manufacturing. And finally we've got abuse. So this can be physical, mental or emotional abuse. If you're physically abused, that can cause trauma inside the body. If you're emotionally abused, that can cause trauma in the body and that is toxic. So if you're in a toxic relationship or if you had toxic relationships when you were younger, that can be a factor. This, I find that most people that have chronic disease, like a, a, a seriously debilitating chronic health condition, like multiple sclerosis or chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, something severe like that, there's usually an element of of use, uh, especially in childhood, that needs to be addressed. And then on the other side, we've got deficiency. So we've got the obvious ones, vitamins and minerals, pretty obvious. But then we've also got water and air. So if you're 
not getting enough good quality air, that can be a, a huge factor if the water that you're, you're drinking isn't really very good. So if you're drinking tap water, for example, not only are you not getting good quality water, you're also getting some toxicity. You're getting the chemicals that are in the tap water. So you're getting the chlorine, you're getting the fluoride, you're getting all of the recycled pharmaceuticals. So you're getting like trace amounts of like cocaine and different types of antibiotics and the, the pill. So you messes your estrogen levels up. All of that is in tap water. So that this is like a, again, so there's usually something on here affects something over here. They're, they're usually connected in one way or another. Another one is movement. So if you're not moving properly, if you're very sedentary, if you're, um, you're not getting enough activity, you're not moving, you don't move your lymphatic system, you don't improve your circulation, you're not building muscle, you're not stimulating your body that is actually alive, well, it, it dies. Uh, so you really need that. And finally, emotions. If you have a deficiency of certain emotions, you know, if you're not having enough connection, if you're not having enough support, if you're not having enough love, if you're not having enough like joy and happiness, you will get sick. I know that sounds kind of like, how can that cause a physical health problem? I guarantee you it can. It, it, it was a factor for me, and it's a factor for almost everyone that I see develop severely chronic health problems. Because when you're really ill, you don't feel like being happy, you know, you, you, you feel really miserable. And, and that's, that kind of ties into it. So down here I've got, so these are like the, the themes, these are like the metaphysical themes behind the root causes. And these are the most common root causes I actually see, like the tangible. So these are the things that happen that cause these things up there. So we've got food poisoning events, somebody gets food poisoning, they've got um, an imbalanced microflora, this, this sets them up for like post-infectious IBS, something like that, that can be a root cause. We've got work exposure, so as I said, if you work in a hair salon, or if you work as a chemical engineer, or if you work in a mine, and you can be exposed to these chemicals and stuff. If you work on an oil rig, you know, there's, you can get all different kinds of chemicals there. That could be a root cause. We've got trauma. So I've got two things here. I've got physical and non-physical. So if you experience a physical trauma, so in my case, I, I tried to do a flip on a trampoline. I'm not, wasn't very good at that. Landed on my neck, created a, a subluxation in my, in my cervical spine. But this can happen as a car accident. This can happen as like falling off your bike. This could be any kind of physical trauma. This can, this can be a root cause, an instigating factor for a chronic health condition. And you've got non-physical as well. So in the first seven years of our life, we're in a very hypnotic state and we take everything that happens around us personally. So if for some reason there isn't enough money for you to get one of the presents that you want, you can take that as a, as a, as a personal attack and, a, and an emotional trauma. And there's obviously more over emotional traumas that may have a physical component as well, like physical and emotional abuse, like being physically attacked or raped or sexual assault, something like that. You've got the physical component in there and the emotional one. That's a double whammy, that's even more tricky. That can definitely be an instigating factor causing a chronic disease. So that can definitely do it. Water damaged building. So this is this is usually what happens with the with the mold exposure. And this can be a water damaged house, water damaged work environment. This can be um, anywhere where you're basically just being exposed to mold and mycotoxins on a daily basis. And it just it just destroys your microflora, you accumulate toxicity, and this can be a root, a root cause factor as well. This is, I would say this is probably the most common one that I see, but I do work with a lot of people that have mold illness. So again, maybe a bit biased there. Over here we've got amalgams. So lots of people have amalgam mercury fillings. They're very common, scarily common. I don't even know how we've been doing this for so long, but definitely go for your ceramic fillings. They're, they're a way better option. I've got a video coming about teeth soon because my teeth are, I just went to the dentist, my teeth are doing really well. Completely, the, the dentist like her jaw like dropped. She was like, wow. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a video about teeth and oral health soon. So that's coming. So if you're not subscribed, if you're not following me, make sure you do that so you get to see that video. Next we've got veganism, and I put veganism here. I didn't want to because it's kind of like a bit like, it kind of creates like an us versus them divide, which I don't really like to do, but I really think it needs to be said because this was a factor that contributed towards my, my development of my chronic health problems, and I see it happen a lot. The thing about a vegan diet is it just doesn't contain the nutrients that you need to I'm not saying you can't heal on a vegan diet. If you're doing that and it's working for you, fantastic, keep doing that. But if it isn't working for you, maybe stop doing it. I find that people, some, I've seen some people heal on it, but I've seen most people really, really struggle to heal and then eventually stop and then start find healing. You just don't get the fat soluble vitamins that you need. You don't get, it's a different video, okay? We're not doing this today. I just find that this is a, is a common root cause. So we can change this to poor, poor nutrition. If you create deficiencies up here, 
vitamin and mineral deficiencies, then that's going to be a problem. And I see this one happen a lot. If it's working for you, do it. But I see it doesn't work for a lot of people. So if it isn't working for you, stop doing it. Um, medication, this was also a factor for me. So you've got some kind of health problem developing. What do you do? Go to the doctor. They say, oh, we don't know what the hell's going on. Here you go. You can have a medication. And that medication can actually contribute towards be, as being a root cause factor. So for me, I had like gut and digestive problems. I was given a medication called Buscapan, which is an antispasmodic. This basically destroys the enteric nervous system. It, it, it stops, it's, it's a neurotoxin. It stops the nervous system in the gut from being able to function properly. And if you take that long time, it can cause lasting damage. I took it for like two months and I was getting heart palpitations and constipation and like loads of, like that medication can really be um, quite nasty. It can really be a root cause problem. Poor diet kind of ties in with what I was saying here. If you're getting nutritional deficiencies in any way, if you're having too much of some things and not enough of other things, that's going to cause a deficiency. I'm not even going to say specifics. You know, if you have too much of things that aren't helping you and not enough of things that are helping you, that's a recipe for disease. So that can definitely be a factor. And finally, we've got no reason to live. So if you if you don't have anything to live for, why you, why would you stay alive? You know, if you don't have a reason to be, you'll cease to be. So if you don't have something that is keeping you alive, you don't have a reason to stay alive, you'll develop a chronic health condition and then you'll die. And it, that, that'll be, that's, that's kind of fated, you know? If you don't have a reason to live, then you won't. So this one is really underrated. If you don't have a reason to be here, you know, if you don't have family, if you don't have a purposeful work, job, career, if you don't have friends, if you don't have whatever is important to you, if you don't have it, then why would you be here? You won't. You'll develop a disease, you'll die. So make sure that you're actually pursuing like why you want to be here on earth. Like you have, there are no rules. You can go do whatever you want. So, so go and do it to the, to the best extent that you're currently able. It's really important that you have a reason to live. And then we have something that I call compounding factors. So one of these may have been your root cause, but then you go and do some, so for example, I had a physical trauma. So I had the nerve subluxation in my neck. I had a water damaged building, so I had the mold exposure. These were two of my root causes. But on top of that, I also had childhood trauma. And because I'm getting ill, I was like, okay, I'll try a vegan diet. So I try a vegan diet, I go to the doctor, I try medication. So in that case, these ones aren't the root cause, but they're compounding factors. So a compounding factor I would define as something that wasn't actually the root cause, but it's something that has to be addressed in your healing protocol. Because if you don't, even though it wasn't the root cause of the problem, it's it's a significant problem that needs to be that needs to be looked at. So if you if you if you've had a chronic health condition for a long time, like sometimes I'm working with people that have had an illness for like 15 to 20 years, you've had compounding problems that have accumulated over the span of all of those years. You really have to make sure that you you go through that health history and figure out like, okay, I had a food poisoning here and I had a, an exposure here and this is when I had my amalgams removed. It's like these are all important things that you need to address in your healing protocol. They're not the root cause, but they're almost as important as it. So they really need to be addressed too. And then I've just got some final little notes down here. In my experience, these things are never the root cause. It's never SIBO, it's never candida, it's never an autoimmune condition, and it's never parasites and infections. I would say that some people, this is the case, but it's probably not you. I'd say statistically, this is very unlikely to be you. Parasites and infections are usually something that happen as a compounding factor. They're some, they're like, they can take advantage of the lowered immune system. They can take advantage of nutritional deficiency in your body. Something like that. I find that this is very rarely the root cause. And these are never the root cause. SIBO and candida, absolutely never. Without exception, never a root cause. Autoimmune conditions, also never a root cause. There's either a physical or emotional trauma component. There's either some kind of gut damage and intestinal permeability. Autoimmunity, never a root cause. Sleepwalk and leader, never a root cause. Parasites infections, very, very, very rarely a root cause, probably not you. So if you think that any of these are your root cause, you're, I would say you're probably wrong, and you need to do a little bit more digging. So today's video is sponsored by me. So I'm able to produce all these videos because I do this for a living. This is my full-time job. It has been for the last two years, and I, I, I absolutely love it. It's, my favorite thing to do. This is, this is my reason to live. So this is, this is one of the things that helped me heal and this is what I do full time. And as I said earlier, I've helped over a thousand people figure out what their root cause is and then start the initial steps to building a, a healing protocol so they don't have to have a chronic disease anymore. So if you've watched all this way to the end of the video, 
now you have all this information and you're just like, wow, I feel kind of overwhelmed and I feel maybe a bit stuck, but I feel kind of optimistic as well because now I know that there's something else that I need to investigate. If you want my help doing that, please reach out and let me know. I've left a pinned thing in the comments below. Just click the link, book a call with me, and I'll be more than happy to help you figure this out. As I said, this video is sponsored by me. All of my work up until this point is sponsored by me. I don't take any financial incentives from anybody. I just try to do the best I can and help other people with resolving their chronic health problems. So if you enjoy my content and understanding this concept of root cause makes you think, I should really figure this out and start to build a protocol around resolving my root cause and my compounding factors, it would be my absolute pleasure to help you do that. As I said, that's my reason to live. So if you have any questions, please reach out and let me know or leave me a comment. And if you want to book a call with me, absolutely do it. I'd love to speak with you. So that's everything for me today. See you soon. Ciao. So we have a new set today and I need to finish this live and I have no idea how to do it. Ah, ciao.